What up, players? Warboss Tay back up in this mug. Welcome to a video unboxing slash assembly slash review of the Screaming Antelope from the Kingdom Death 1.5 Monster Core set. You can see that this model all built up looks terrific. It is uh, ready to charge and slice and dice and uh, consume some adventurers. Look at when you zoom in. Oh man, this is one of the things that I talk about in the uh, unboxing and like the closer look at the model is that he has some uh, like the remains of his previous meals trying to trying to pop out from his tummy. There are all these like fingers and hands reaching out and it is so gross. I love it. There are a couple of uh, mold lines that I still have to clean off. I haven't gotten them completely. You can see there. But other than that, the model is ready to be primed. And uh, you know what? Actually, I take that back. I might have to uh, glue his feet a little bit more solidly onto the base there. And uh, I'll talk about that more at the end of the video, but just wanted to show you what he looks like right now, built up, ready to go, uh, rearing up on his hind legs with uh, his body cavity open to swallow some more survivors. Nom nom nom. What a great model and uh, what a great addition to the survivors core set. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the rest of the video to see what he looks like on the sprue, what he looks like all uh, separated with the clip parts all clipped out of the sprue, and a little final wrap up where I talk about some of my trials and tribulations, victories, and uh, obstacles with building this model. Thanks for watching, stay tuned. What up players, it's Warboss Tay back up in this mug. Welcome to another video where I am unboxing and reviewing the uh, Kingdom Death frames going one by one, building up the models and painting them. And today we're looking at a frame that has three different playing components on it. So we're only going to be looking at the Screaming Antelope today. It's this big beastie right in the middle. I'm going to talk about the different pieces you see on the frame. I'll briefly mention the other playing pieces you have now. There's two couples where there's a couple called the Intimacy Couple. There are two figures known as the Intimacy Male and the Intimacy Female. We'll dig into them when uh, we get done with this guy. There's also a character known as the Hand, which uh, is this bigger, chunky guy. I think he's, a, he's like another villain. But today we're gonna be taking a look at the Screaming Antelope for the Kingdom Death range. And uh, yes, I've been airbrushing, which is why you can call me Mr. Green Thumb. But here we've got the right side of the screaming antelope here. You can see exposed rib cage. Really gross. Something I noticed when I was looking up the uh, different pictures for how people have painted this guy. You actually can see here inside or on the side there are little protrusions coming out of the side of his torso and those are all hands. Like there's people inside reaching out through his body. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six hands over there. More hands on the other side. It's really disturbing, but then Kingdom Death is all about really disturbing images and um, all that kind of stuff. So you can see here's the other side. This guy has a horn on the left side. The other uh, side doesn't have a horn. So we're going to take a look at that piece here. So, okay, the, the biggest pieces of the model are the two sides of the body, obviously. Then you've got his tail here, which looks like a standard, uh, I guess, like kind of horse or animal tail. It's big and full and has great detail, great sculpting on it, lots of little individual lines. So you can paint those hairs and once you shade it, you can highlight them really nicely, give some really good effect. And uh, also on this frame that belongs to the Screaming Antelope, you have... Uh, the here the horn for the side that doesn't have the horn it's, looks like a spiral uh, sorry I can get some focus on it looks like a spiral spiral horn goat ram horn and then you've got the leg for the raised leg that's up so one thing you'll notice about the animal which is something that I found when I was looking at paint schemes is there's a little bit of hair tufts of hair on the back obviously the tail is all hair but then the skin of the body I've seen people painting them a lot of different ways you can either paint the skin to look like uh, exposed skin that's been stretched and um, pulled out over the body and maybe it's like dried dried out and withered or you could paint it as uh, exposed God, what's the word I'm looking for like that red exposed musculature under the skin tendons vein uh, not veins but like the just, you know, if you take your flesh off, what does that part of your body look like? All red, veiny, 
liney. Skin. Skin. No, it's like under the skin. The red. The red. Like you thin skinned. Thin skin. Okay. Maybe. Um, but then, like the part that's usually like painted. The body's exhibit. Yes, exactly. Like the body's exhibit. Ooh. <laughs> Man, I think creeped me out so much when I saw it when I was a kid. All right. So, leg, horn, tail, two halves of the body. You also you also have two ears up here. And uh, you can tell which side goes where because one of the ears has a little bit of a an insert that goes into the side here, and the other side is more just like you stick onto the uh, the area there. So I am going to clip these guys out of the frame. I'm going to build it up, and I will uh, come back to you at the end of this video to show you what he looks like, all assembled, ready for paint. Stay tuned. Hey, so, okay, I lied. I wanted to show you guys, before we go, the um, amount of mold lines and stuff. I just clipped the pieces out of the frame. I lined them up here to show them to you. There's really not too much. Some people asked if I could show off, like, the, the model and how, I guess, easy or hard it would be to clean. The only mold lines are the ones that obviously show up in the center of any model. So going down the center of the legs, like you can see this with Games Workshop's horses on their Bretonians or their Empire Knights. They've all got these uh, lines that go straight down the middle of the legs there. Let's take a look again at those nasty hands. So gross, but I'm really looking forward to painting them now the more I see them. And on this side, you can also see a little bit of exposed rib there. So I, I guess it's supposed to symbolize that the the creature is always either changing or morphing and his skin is, is growing or molting and growing back or the top layer of his skin has just been completely sloughed away and whatever, like he's swallowed the victims in here, they're trying to get out and they're still alive. Gross! You can see when you dry fit the model together, his, uh, the inside of him is opened up or like the middle, the torso is opened up like it's gonna swallow someone. So I think his lore is he just goes around and he like attacks people and he stomps on them and then like his body opens up there and that's how he swallows him. Kachunk. Tail here has one mold line right down the center. Uh, you can kind of see it there in the light but it looks like it's gonna be easy to put together. The horn here has one uh, very very light mold line down the center. Cleaning that off with the back of your hobby knife is gonna be really simple and you don't have to worry about like gouging out any of the plastic. A rookie mistake I made a lot was when I was cleaning my models, I would take the blade edge and scrape it like this. And that's a easy way to gouge out plastic and make your model look really, really terrible. Use the back side and you can scrape it almost as hard as you want to and it's not gonna dull down too much of the detail. It's a lot simpler and you don't worry about losing any of the model that you don't want to. Here's the other leg that's raised up. You can see it's a uh, <laughs> what's that word? When, when you, uh, pointed. He's got a pointed foot. He's a ballet ballet dancer. He's got a pointed foot. And then he's got two ears right here. The ears don't have any mold lines or that I could see because they're so small. So I'm gonna go and use uh, Model Masters plastic cement. It's my favorite tool for gluing together plastic models. It goes on uh, pretty thick, and when you press the pieces together. You don't need too much. It spreads out and then it melts the plastic so that when it dries, the plastic reseals itself together because the plastic's kind of melted. So when it dries, it, uh, it really attaches to the other side of the plastic. It's perfect for uh, doing any plastic pieces, any larger pieces, models like this. You can also use it for infantry models and uh, it's just as good. I've also used Tamiya Clear, or <laughs> every time I use a Tamiya product, I think it's a clear product. Tamiya Plastic Glue, it's more watery, and uh, that also works as well, but you're gonna have to hold it to establish a bond, whereas with plastic cement or plastic, uh, any kind of plastic that's uh, adhesive that's thicker than plastic glue is gonna create almost an instant bond because it's almost like gel and uh, it sticks together really quickly. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm going to uh, glue the thing together, and while it's drying, we'll come together to show you how the assembly went. Then I'm going to put on the side and prime it before I get the painting. So stay tuned for the finished assembled model. All right, and here he is, just like I promised at the beginning of the video, the screaming antelope rearing up on his hind legs, ready to devour some poor, poor adventurers. 
I'm really looking forward to painting this guy. He is the uh, most dynamic of all of the models so far that I've worked on in the Kingdom Death set. You remember I painted the survivors, starting survivors, and uh, the monsters I did painted were the White Lion and the, the Butcher. The Butcher was in a very static, come at me bro, like the doors opening and all of a sudden there's a villain there holding all the, all the weapons. And the White Lion is just kind of moving forward, very regal and uh, more hulking. This is the most dynamic pose. He's rearing up on his hind legs. He's got his front legs uh, ready to cave in some poor adventurer's skulls. And yeah, like I said in the beginning, he's got the re remnants of some, oops, some meals, some previous meals sticking out of his belly there, trying to, trying to claw their way out of their un unholy prison. I love, like, these hands coming out are so great. So some of the trials that I've had to overcome when putting together this beastie was that when you're putting the holding the torso together, there's no real way that I've found to connect the back. So what I'm gonna have to do is go in there, maybe with some liquid green stuff, and just kind of uh, close over that seal. Or what I, what I also might do is to uh, plug it up with enough paint and do some highlighting and washing to kind of close that seal. And you're not really gonna see it because you're not really going to be uh, popping this model open, but my plan is for the inside to make it nice and red and gory and wet using some Tamiya Clear Red and to uh, contrast that bright redness with uh, some more drab uh, pallid skin tones. I'm thinking about Rackarth Flesh shaded with some Agrax Earth Shade to make a very uh, stretched out, almost like dead flesh look. I'm thinking brown, or not brown, but gray fur for the back to contrast with the beige tones. And uh, yeah, maybe to add to that some like seraphim sepia washed horns so that it looks like a old, old um, like ram's horns. You might remember I've done a similar effect with most of my Ogre Kingdom tusks and horns and stuff. First I was thinking maybe I'll do some like flayed muscle for the bodywork because it looks like exposed muscle but uh, in the end I think what I want to do is make the red of the center cavity the bright really vibrant color and make the outside look more like uh, dead decaying skin may not decay maybe more like sun-dried weathered and um, just like taut stretched out skin I'm thinking of doing the eyes all completely in black rather than having pupils because I've seen a lot of people who've painted the eyeballs black. I'm, I'm going to do like a gloss varnish to really make it glossy and shiny. And yeah, I'm really, really excited. Gray hooves. And uh, that way I can do, you know what, also if I do some really pallid flesh tones for the skin, I can contrast that with some, I, I might do like bright flesh, like skin for the fingers reaching out so that it makes a nice contrast. The pink skin of the fingers of the hands contrasting with the almost like dead white of the uh, of the creature's skin. Should be great. So thanks for watching and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this little video and uh, don't forget to hit the like button below, hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and I guess they've got this thing now where you uh, I don't know, it's been so long since I've been consistent on YouTube, but hit that little bell for notifications, then you can get updated every time I post a new video up on YouTube. Hey, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Oops, one more thing I forgot to mention. When you're building this model, you want to be able to prop the front part of it so it doesn't lean over. Because it's so top heavy and because the angle of the body is going to force the weight forward, even if you use plastic cement like I have, it's still not completely dry and the monster wants to kind of lean forward and lean back. And we don't want him to do either of those. The vibrant Lantern suggests putting a folded index card right up under there. What I've also done last night, what I did, is, what I'm planning to do again before I uh, leave it for a day, is taking my Model Masters cement and just kind of tucking it under the front leg and balancing it so that the monster stays at a, a static position. So it's not the prettiest thing in the world, especially if you're going to use your plastic cement for other stuff, but uh, for right now, for him, that's gonna do to help keep him in place. I was also thinking of drilling his hooves into the base. If the plastic cement doesn't create a hold that I'm completely satisfied with, that I'm sure won't 
shift around due to uh, playing and being used as an actual game piece because that's what the client wants to do, then I might go back and, and see if I can drill that. But right now I don't have a drill bit that's small enough or a brass rod that's small but uh, sturdy enough to drill into and I'm afraid of messing up the hose. So I'm just going to go with the glue right now, see if that works, and then uh, come back to it at a later date if I'm not completely satisfied with that hold. I think it'll, it'll hold pretty well though. Ma Model Masters has never never gone wrong for me before. Once it's completely dry, it's going to take you maybe 8 to 10 hours and uh, to completely dry. This guy, I set him on the side last night maybe 4 or 5 hours ago. So the bond isn't completely stuck yet. When I took him off now, he was starting to lean. So I'm going to uh, keep him up there for the rest of the day. We'll see how he looks tonight and I'll give you an update when I paint him up. Alright, thanks again for watching. See you in the next video.